Hello everybody and welcome back to another video and if you're new and you're here for the first time nice to meet you I'm Jane and my husband Mike is behind the camera British early retirees debt and mortgage free and living a thrifty frugal and money-saving life on a super tight budget here in Brittany in northwest France and every Wednesday we open our home and invite you in for a big week money chat let's take a look at what we're gonna have a chat about this week <laughs> So every week we open our video by telling you we live a thrifty and frugal life and I'm aware that some of you might not know us very well and you might be here for the first time. You may have just watched the last few videos for example. So we're going to have a quick canter through just a few of the frugal things that we do all the time. Those everyday ordinary frugal things that we do to save money every single day. use reusables so we don't do things like have paper plates or paper napkins or anything like that we always eat off the good china we always use the good cutlery we always use the good glasses we always use our cloth napkins we wipe up with microfiber cloths that just could quickly go in the washing machine when we do the laundry we always use old rags for floor cloths and things like that um, We've got lovely napkins that I pick up in charity shops, get them home, give them a good launder. And I've got a box full of them in the kitchen that we use on a regular basis. And of course, we use tea towels. I'm gonna to put in a caveat here, I have two small dogs. Every now and then they might throw up or do a wee or something worse in the house. And I do keep paper towels for that. But other than that, we use reusables. <laughs> We're a very simple couple. We're a pair of homebodies and we really like to do things for free. We've got lovely walks just on our doorstep here so we can walk away from our property and go for numerous walks around here. We can get in our car, which I know has a cost implication to it and a little bit for the fuel, but within five to 10 minutes drive, we can go and do things for free. And there's lots of places that we love to go here. Canal walks, walks on the moorland, walks by the rivers and the lakes around here. So we like to do quite a lot of things for free in our local neighbourhood. If you don't know, well, I'll tell you now, we are basic buyers. If we find a basic product, which means the supermarket's cheapest product and we're happy with it, we'll continue to use it. So we will happily use their basics coffee, coffee, their basics toiletries, their cheapest cleaning products. I seem to always use their cheapest laundry products. If they work, I'm really happy to use them. Also, if they don't work, it's a good experiment, I won't use it again. But in the main, if you look in my cupboards and it's, you're looking at everything from butter to washing up liquid to a packet of ham or stuff like that or even frozen products i'll buy the supermarket's basic range mike give everybody a wave <laughs> the next thing you need to know about us is we can do it ourselves we do do it ourselves so things like painting our house the interior and the exterior we're not afraid, the royal we. Mike's not afraid to get up a ladder and paint the house on the outside. All the things that we can do ourselves. So even if the car needs a deep clean, we wouldn't take it to be valeted. We'll do that ourselves. We look after all our land ourselves, cut our hedges ourselves, look after all the grass ourselves. Uh, Mike does all the strimming, brush, weed whacking. Weed whacking. Weed whacking themselves. So if we can do it ourselves, we do do it ourselves. And that comes to things like tiling our bathroom, tiling our floors. And I'm, looking, I'm sitting in a room now that my husband just about rebuilt and I'm very proud of him, so I need to say that. So therefore we are DIYers. If we can do it ourselves, oh, we fitted our kitchen as well. I could go on and on about his marvellous DIY skills. 
So if we can do it ourselves, and I join in too, it's not all him, if we can do it ourselves, we do do it ourselves. We take on one affordable project at a time. We save up for it and we get that bit done. Because of that, we really have to be patient. I think that's something about frugal living. You are patient. You have to accept there are going to be things that are not perfect. There are going to be things on your property, in your house, in your life in general that are not perfect. And you can take one thing at a time, make that one thing better, and then move on to the next one. So if you ever come around to my house, you will find unfinished projects, but I can promise you they're on the list, they'll get done eventually. As we say at the beginning of every video, we are debt and mortgage free. The last time that we used any debt at all was 2009 and we became debt free in 2011. So since then, we've never borrowed any money for anything at all. We've saved up for absolutely everything and paid for everything in cash. So there's another part of our frugal life. We don't have any credit cards. We don't need credit cards in France. France doesn't operate on a credit card system. Very few people have credit cards and credit cards here operate like debit cards. You can only run up the debt for the month and pay it off. So you don't need a credit card to hire a car. You don't need a credit card to book a hotel. You can do all of that by post and by a check if you want to, or turn up and pay for it by debit card or book it online with your debit card or hire a car and give them a check. So we don't have any debt. We don't use any debt. It's the way we live. We do absolutely everything we can to avoid any waste at all. We make sure that any leftovers are eaten up for lunch the next day. I actually make intentional leftovers to save on energy so I don't waste energy and I just reheat things in the microwave. Anything that we're not going to eat, for example, carrot peelings or potato peelings or things like that, or apple peels, all gets turned into compost and dug back into the garden. Old clothes that are absolutely beyond repair end up being cut up, either get put in quilts or become cleaning cloths. So we do everything we possibly can not to waste anything at all. We don't waste car journeys, we don't waste electricity, we don't waste water, whatever it is, whatever we can think of, we try as best we possibly can to avoid any waste. We absolutely love to upcycle. So if we can go and buy something secondhand and fix it up and give it a new life, we really enjoy doing that. It's part of our frugal, don't waste stuff ethos really. I love quilting and I made it, I made an absolute point and I have stuck to it since about 2015, not to buy brand new fabric. What I do now is I go to charity shops and I'm looking for the things that I can cut up and upcycle. In the UK, I used to love it if charity shops had a sale on or a one pound rail. And I used to look for the XXL men's shirts, really colorful ones if I could find them and cut those up. I could often get a meter and a half of fabric out of men's shirts. Now I live here in France, I love to buy what I call the kind of groovy, retro 60s, 70s and 80s bedding because they have the great big long pillowcases here called, and I've got to excuse my French pronunciation, traversin or traversin and it's a big long pillowcase and you can get loads of fabric out of it and I, and I use those and I use pillowcases and duvet covers and sheets 
and loads of those go into my quilting now. I can also pick up things like, again, clothing here if they've got like a one euro sale on. So I absolutely love to take something old, fix it up and give it a new life. Our house has no heating system, no central air, air, no air source heat pump, no gas central heating, no oil central heating. It has none of that. My lovely husband in the rebuilding of this house insulated this within an inch of its life. And because of that, we heat this house solely with two wood stoves, one in the kitchen and one in our living room. And I say our living room, our living room, dining room, and the heat permeates through the rest of the house as well. And so because of that, we cut the wood from our own land. The land was derelict when we bought it. There were in excess of 30 trees on the land, fallen on the land when we came here, either from storms or the fact that they had shallow roots and in wet weather, they just ended up on their side. And when we cleared the land, we piled them up and Mike is working through them with his chainsaw and cutting them up. We maybe have another year or so of wood, but since we've been here in, we moved in in 2019, we haven't bought any wood at all. So we heat our house solely with the wood that Mike's cut up with his chainsaw, that we split together, that we stack together. And so we don't pay for any heating. It's all, so I think it's not bad. 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23 this year. Five years of not paying for any heating. And if we're lucky, we're gonna have one more year of not paying for heating. And I know what someone's gonna ask, what will we do then? We will buy wood off a local farmer. Almost everything we eat at home is made from scratch. It's partly the way we eat in this country anyway. We don't buy pie fillings, we don't buy pastry. You can, we don't. We don't buy cake mixes, you can, we don't. You can buy ready-made food, you can buy paella in a bag frozen, you can buy pasta and sauce in a bag frozen, you can, we don't. We cook from scratch at home. It's just an everyday frugal thing that we do to save money. I find it saves me money. We don't eat out. I won't say never ever, because last year we ate out three times. It's 2023, we haven't eaten out at all yet. I'm not gonna say that we won't, but in the main, we don't. We know a lot of people do eat out, they buy takeout, they buy coffees when they go out, they buy food in restaurants and takeaways and cafes and fast food, but as a couple, that's not our choice. So it saves us a huge amount of money. It's part of our everyday frugality. If we do go out, we like to take a picnic. about living in the countryside we've got lovely fresh air and plenty of it and something that we do to save money our everyday frugality is any day that we can get our laundry outside to dry we do and in the winter when we've got that wood stove going in the kitchen we dry our washing over our wood stove so it does save us we think loads of money by drying our laundry in the fresh air or with the heat of the wood the most of our two electricity tariffs. We have a regular tariff through most of the day and a cheaper tariff that runs from 11.30 at night till 7.30 in the morning. So anything and everything that operates on a timer is used at night time. Our water is heated by electricity, it's heated overnight. Our dishwasher goes on at night and our washing machine goes on at night and anything else that we can charge overnight is charged overnight. 
so we make the most of our cheap rate electricity. As we don't like waste, and as we like to give things a second life, if we can buy something secondhand, we buy something secondhand. And Mike and I were just having a chat about, we were looking around our living room and dining room here. We were listing the things that are in here. We've got our chest of drawers, our dresser, our side tables, our lamps, our pictures, our mirrors, our table and chairs, our sideboard over there, the chair I'm sitting in, the pictures behind me, the lamp, the side table, they're all secondhand. In fact, just about every piece of furniture that we've got in our house is secondhand. The car was secondhand, the car trailer was secondhand, loads of things. If we can buy it secondhand, because we like to give things a second life, we do. We don't upgrade. We keep everything until it's on its knees, its last legs. I'm thinking of vacuum cleaners we've had in the past that we've fixed with super glue and duct tape. Anything and everything, we'll keep it going. We ran this channel for two years on an iPhone 5. We don't have any cameras or any special equipment to run this channel. And we went from an iPhone 5 to an iPhone 13. So it shows you how many upgrades there were in between before we upgraded. So whatever we've got in the house, whether it's a food processor or something we've got in the kitchen or, you know, you've got a set of glasses and three of them are broken. We just keep going with those three and the other, th other three from the other set that are broken. And we haven't got a full set of cutlery and we just keep going with it. We don't feel the need to upgrade things just because they've just maybe not fashionable anymore. We're remembering that we had a sofa that we paid good money for and we sat on that for about 13 years until it fell apart. We might couldn't fit, he screwed the frame together, he reinforced the frame and in the end it just couldn't be fixed anymore at all. So we don't upgrade until we absolutely have to. A video today as we said a quick canter through those everyday frugal things that we do and we do plenty more as well but those are a quick 15 and we hope that you enjoyed them and if you did go on hit the like button if you want to see more videos like this and you don't want to miss them make sure that you subscribe to our channel hit the little notification bell because we put out three videos a week we love all your comments we read every single one of them and we will see you soon bye for now